Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today, I'm evaluating zip books for the Chapter 3 of the Fit Small Business case study, which deals with accounts receivable. We are evaluating the sophisticated plan of zip books. So today we're dealing with accounts receivable, and the case study first asks us to set up a sales tax. I've done a little research and I don't see a place to manage your sales taxes outside of your create invoice screen. So we're going to go ahead and set up the sales tax a little bit later when we actually create an invoice. Okay, the second thing it asks us to do is to customize an invoice template. And we want to add a logo, we want to adjust the color scheme, and we want to add a personalized message to the bottom of the invoice. So uh, let's go ahead and create an invoice. Now there's nowhere here to actually select a template. I've done a little bit of research, looked around, and there is no way to customize your template um, in in uh, zip books. However, you can drag a logo here. So you can add a logo. Um, and I believe uh, down here you could add whatever personal message you want. However, there's no way to change the layout of the invoice. There's no way to change the colors of the invoice. So let's go ahead and kind of score the invoicing customization here. Um, so there's no templates to actually kind of change the layout. Um, we can't, uh, we can upload the logo. Um, we can't change the invoice colors, but we can add a personalized message at the bottom. Okay, so moving on, um, we want to issue an invoice to Family Bowling for the 40 hours of Hank's labor. Um, and there's not going to be any sales tax on this. So the 40 hours of Hank's labor and the $200 permit fee. So we're going to bill this to Family Bowling. Okay, and now if you watched chapter two, you found that we can actually mark expenses as billable um, so that when we do an invoice and assign them to a customer, so when we create an invoice, we can automatically import those items. So let's do this here. So let's click the import unbilled items and let's see. So we don't want time entries, we want the. Let's see. Add line items now. Okay, so that's weird. So it it didn't <laughs> it didn't list these items uh, over there, but it did include them. So we were able to import the expenses. Um, looks like we have a typo there. Okay, uh, good. So it actually even tells us when it's incurred, the price. Great. And so that's what exactly what we wanted to bill: the forty hours of Hank's labor, and the. Uh, permit fee. Okay, so that is our invoice. That was very handy. So this adding unbilled expenses, that's not something you see very often uh, in a software um, in this price range. And so that's a very nice feature, especially combined with the time tracking. So not only can you do this for expense items, you can do it for time tracking. So you can uh, track time, assign it to a client. Uh, when you go to bill that client, you can do what we just did and list all of the time that's been that's been assigned but not yet billed. So that is a, that's a really nice feature for uh, this level of software. Okay, so can we print and email this invoice? Okay, so let's save it. Okay, and looks like we can download it. That would be a way to email it. I mean, a way to print it. Yeah, that just that does not look very nice at all, does it? Yeah, but that's what our invoice looks like. Okay. Well, that does. I guess it's meant to be print on letterhead. Um, actually, let's get finalized for sending. Send to looks like here is where you can type email addresses, and then we can click finalize and send. Tell you what, I'm going to, let's go ahead, I'm going to send it to myself here. Let's see what it looks like in the PDF that we receive it from. Okay, 
There we go. So let's let's look at this PDF again here. Oh, here we go. We can preview our customer view here. Okay, so if we in, if we had all of our business contact information entered in the system, then this would be kind of all the business information. Um, so, yeah, it, it, basically it has no color. It's not a pretty looking invoice, but it's it's effective. Okay, so let's go ahead and grade this here. Um, so we can certainly add new customers. Um, add unbilled labor and expenses to the invoice. Again, that was really neat. That's not something you can do with this type of with this level of software generally. We could print the invoice. We can edit the invoice. Um, we can add inventory items to the invoice. Um, yeah, well, let's go back and look at that. Yeah, you could add inventory items. However, it's not going to do any of the inventory accounting for you. Okay, I remember now. So we can add the inventory item to the invoice, but it's not going to help us do any inventory accounting. Um, okay, let's go ahead and let's create another invoice here so we can deal with uh, some of this this inventory stuff. Um, so we want to uh, record an invoice for the sale of 20 plumbing widgets to Big Time Diner for $25 each, and we want to collect a 6% New York sales tax on the item. So let's uh, create another invoice. Okay, invoices. Let's create another one. This one is going to Big Time Diner. I don't think we've actually set them up yet. So we'll add them as a customer. Okay, save. Okay, now we want to add inventory. So those are going to be under items. So let's add our uh, plumbing widgets. And we're going to charge them $25. And we are selling them 20 of the plumbing widgets. Okay. So that is $500. Now we want to add tax. And so to add tax, we're going to go into here. And right now we can see we can't add any taxes. There's no, we don't have any taxes set up. So let's go to edit taxes. And this is the only way I've been able to find this edit taxes screen. So we're going to add a sales tax here and we're going to call it uh, New York sales tax of 6%. Okay, and let's save that. Now, when we go into the properties of this line item, we should be able to select New York. And now we'll be able to, to do that immediately for all of our inventory items that are subject to that same New York tax. Let's hit done, and now we can see that it is charging a 6% New York tax. So that's very good. A little weird that you can't, I can't seem to find the edit taxes screen other than through that invoice, through the invoice like we just did. Um, but it is there. Okay, um, good. So let's save this invoice. Okay, go back to our invoices. Um, make sure this gets saved properly. There we go. Okay. Now we got those two invoices. Okay, um, so let's do some grading here on our rubric. So we can charge sales tax on the inventory. Um, did the program automatically record cost of goods sold? No. Zipbooks really doesn't do anything with inventory at all. Um, good. Okay, so um, moving on. Um, we want to create an, a recurring invoice that's going to be to Trampoline City every month for $100 for a service contract. Um, and we want to set up that service contract as an item. So let's go to items. And let's go, we're going to add a new one for a service contract. Okay, and we're going to bill, um, what was it, $100 a month. Okay. 
Okay, there's our service contract. Now let's go to this recurring profiles. Okay, so a recurring profile is an invoice template and options that future invoices will be based on. Okay, so let's re set up this recurring invoice. So again, we can click and drag our logo there. Um, now this is a new customer we made up here. So for trampoline city, let's add them as a new customer. Okay, um, we're going to add here the service contract for $100. Um, do we need any sales tax on that? Nope. The case study tells us no sales tax. Okay, so that's $100 invoice. Now, we need to make it a recurring invoice. And so it's going to say starts on January 31st, recurs monthly, going on forever until we actually stop it. Okay, there we go. So that's all we have to do to set up the recurring invoice. Now, one thing, notice this recurring invoice is always going to start on whatever day you create it and then monthly from there because other software programs we've reviewed you can actually set which day of the month um, it's going to recur on this one it's always going to recur on exactly one month from whenever you create it so that may not necessarily be what you want um, oh you know what actually I bet we can change it right here okay so here we could go in and we could actually change it to a different day of the month if we wanted to so that would be when it starts on and when it recurs on. Okay, so that's good. Nice, okay, so let's hit save. Okay, and hit save. Yeah, I guess I haven't verified my email address for ZipBooks must be what's causing that. Um, so it's not letting me save it here. Okay, let me pause here and see if I can, see if I can verify my email address. Okay, so I verified my email address and now I was able to save that recurring invoice. And so if we go to invoices, we can see. So actually, no, that's interesting. So the recurring invoice doesn't show up in our invoices. We got to go probably over here into recurring profiles, and here we'll see the recurring invoice. Okay. So um, we were able to create an item for a service contract. Um, we were able to set up a monthly invoice. OK, so now let's look at receiving money on our outstanding invoices. So let's go to our invoices. Now the case study asks us um, to receive a check from Family Bowling for the full amount of the invoice, but we don't want to record the receipt yet. So let's talk about when, how we ideally how we want to program to to deal with um, receipts of money, right? You generally you don't want to have to show every single invoice that's being paid when you receive a check. You don't want to show each individual check going into your checking account. You want to be able to group them together um, the same as you're actually grouping the physical checks that you're going to take to the bank and actually deposit uh, into your bank account because you want the deposit in your check register to match the deposit on your bank statement. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard when you go to reconcile your account. You won't be able to trace them one to one. If you have, if each check is shown as going separately into your bank account, you might have 10 or 15 or 100 transactions in your books, right? Deposits in your books and only one deposit on your bank statement. And it's going to be very, very hard to reconcile your accounts. And so ideally, when we receive a check, we want to hold that check, combine it with all the other checks, and then make a single deposit uh, into our bank account. So QuickBooks does an excellent job of this. Um, I have not found any other program that does as good a job. So let's see if ZipBooks has anything for this. OK, so we want to receive um, a check from Family Bowling for the full amount. So here is our Family Bowling. Okay. Um, actually, I think we need to finalize this. I don't think we were able to finalize it before. What if we don't want to actually send it? Hmm. What if we don't want to send an email? Hmm. Interesting. Because you will have clients that aren't going to want emails. So it's still a draft until we send it. 
Hmm, okay, well, I guess we're going to have to send it. So I will just go ahead and send it um, to myself. Okay, you sent it and then you could still come in here and print it and mail it to your your customer. But that's a little bit inconvenient that you have to finalize it in order to, you have to send it via email in order to finalize it. Okay, now it does show it as being sent. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to receive payment on this $1,400 paid to the trust yeah so it doesn't have any it doesn't look like it has any special account like um, you know uh, deposits in transit or undeposited funds I think is what QuickBooks calls it so we're just gonna have to put it into our directly into our checking account so that's not ideal um, but looks like that's what you have to do with this program so we will say that they paid by uh, check okay and let's hit save and we've received the fourteen hundred dollar check okay let's go on to the next task um, so now we have an unknown customer that comes into the offices and purchases a plumbing widget for twenty five dollars cash record the cash received okay um, so here we'd rather not do an invoice because it's a cash customer now, if you have a lot of cash customers that just walk in and buy things, you're going to want a point of sale system. Um, but if it's just something that's very occasional, then you're not going to spend the money on a point of sale. So we'd like to be able to issue them a receipt without going through the entire invoicing process. So let's see if there's a way to just enter that transaction, but I don't think we'll be able to do a receipt with it. So sales. Okay, and if we want to add a sale, I think it's going to make us add an invoice. Custom transfer deposit expense. What if we do a deposit? Well, we could say that this is going to go into checking and the amount was $25 and the category could be our sales okay um, yeah I guess this would work but we're really not going to be able to to give them a receipt doing it this way and also we're not being able to run it through our our widgets item although since this program doesn't track uh, inventory for us that's probably not as big a deal but I really don't like I don't like this method um, because we're not going to be able to give them a receipt I think we're going to be better off just doing a regular invoice which really isn't that difficult because we can actually do the payment of the invoice immediately so let's just create an invoice and we're going to call this customer a walk-in customer and so we're just going to set up a new customer called walk-in customer and that's who the, these walk-ins always get billed to okay so our line item is plumbing widgets and we're just selling them one for twenty five dollars uh, let's not forget to add our tax Okay, good. That added our 6% tax. Now he paid immediately, so we're just going to say add payment to it and we're going to put we're going to deposit the cash into our checking account and our payment method will be cash. Okay. And save. Okay. And now finalize for sending and again the only way we can finalize this invoice is to email it so I guess I'm just going to email it to myself again you know and, and in real life most of the time you probably are going to want to email your invoice but not always okay there we go 
Um, now, uh, next thing is you receive a check from Big Time Diner for $200 towards the invoice. Later that day, you receive the other $330. Okay. So, uh, let's look back at our invoices. Now, what we're doing here is trying to determine if... So, we need to finalize this. So, again, I have to email it to myself. Okay, um, so here what we're trying to determine is if we can receive a short payment, meaning they don't pay the entire thing, or you could call it a, a partial payment. So we're going to deposit it to checking, and they are only going to pay us $200 instead of the $330. Um, and it was with a check. Okay, and we can hit save. And there we go. And it says it's been partially paid, and if we go back to invoices, it'll show how much of it is still outstanding. So that's perfect. Later in the day, they come in and pay the other $200. And so let's just open it again. And they're going to pay the extra $200, put it into our checking. put in the wrong amount didn't I okay well now how do we go in and fix that okay so this would be a good test on how we actually fix things if we mess them up so it looks like there's nowhere right here what about editing can I edit the payments nope let's go into probably transactions here Okay. So, okay. Um let's See if we can find this sales payment. So, we have Yeah, here we go. It's so this first one was fine. It's the second one that we need to look at. Um, we need to edit it. And instead of $200, this was supposed to be $330. Okay, and save it. There we go. Now let's look back at our invoices. Well, now it says Oh yeah, now it's been paid. Okay, yep, now with all of it's been paid. Excellent. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some scoring here. Uh, receive a check on an outstanding invoice is easy. Um, don't deposit the check received. We don't have any sort of holding account like uh, undeposited funds, so we can't do that now. We could run everything through the cash account, which might be better, but that's still not really solving the problem. Then you're going to have to go into the cash account and, and manually add things up and then make a journal entry for a transfer. Uh, if it's got a good feature like QuickBooks Online, it'll actually list the checks that are sitting in that undeposited fund so you can click the checks as you add them to your deposit slip and then it'll automatically make the entry. So we could run things through cash, um, but that's not going to be very easy and so that's really not a solution. Issue a sales receipt for a sale paid immediately. Um, we can't do that. We have to issue a, an invoice. Um, accept a short payment. Yes, we were able to do that. And so uh, we weren't able to do a sales receipt. Okay. Combine multiple checks into a single deposit. We can't do that, nor can we combine cash with the checks into a single deposit. Okay. Uh, in accounts receivable, are we able to view outstanding invoices? Yes, we can. Um, and we can do that without generating a report. Okay, so now let's look to see if we can issue a credit memo. I think we should have a invoice from Trampoline City, and we don't because that's in recurring profiles. 
what if we edit this and have it start yesterday? Will that make it create an invoice? Yeah, that might give us an error. Yeah, and it still doesn't show up in our invoices. Hmm, okay. Um, hmm. I don't know if I like that recurring feature. So how, do I, how am I supposed to collect a payment now? I wish the recurring feature should just create an invoice. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice for Trampoline City um, so that we can uh, look to see if we're able to do some more testing on invoicing features. So let's do uh, um, Trampoline City service contract for $100. Okay, we can finalize that. Okay, now if I go back out, $100. Okay, so there we have that $100 um, to Trampoline City. Um, okay, so now Big Time Diner is going to return two plumbing widgets. And now if we could deal with inventory, we would try to add those back in inventory, but we know that Zipbooks doesn't do anything with inventory. But we still want to issue them a credit memo for returning two plumbing widgets. Okay, so how are we, can we do a credit memo for returning plumbing widgets? I don't see anything in here that's going to allow us. So if we open an invoice, is there a way to designate that this is actually a credit memo? What if we enter it as a negative amount? So this is, we're doing this to big time diner and we're dealing with plumbing widgets. Can we enter a negative amount here? So they returned to, okay. Um, but we also have to do the sales tax. Okay, so they don't have a credit memo function, but by doing this as negative, let's see if see if it'll work like a credit memo. Ah, sorry, I messed that up. Okay. So let's go to our invoices screen. Okay, so that created the credit memo. Okay. Um, now let's go to our reports, and I want to see if that actually shows up as a negative accounts receivable. Yeah, see, so that's not showing up as a negative accounts receivable. So in the invoice summary, it's showing up as a negative accounts receivable. So it's not exactly as good as a credit memo, but it is, I do think it's kind of workable. So let's see what else we want to do. Now we want to refund the credit balance in their account by issuing them a check. So let's, what happens if we <laughs> go into invoices here and receive a negative $53 payment, which would be making a payment? So 
So negative $53 into our checking account. Save. Yeah, payment and mail, okay, payment method can't be blank. Needs to be greater than zero. Okay, so we can make the negative $53 go into their accounts receivable. Um, but from there, we can't really do what we need with it. We can't refund it as a check and we can't apply it against other invoices. So it's just going to kind of sit there forever. So that's really not a substitute for a proper credit memo function. So let's do a little bit of grading here. Issue a credit memo to a customer. I'm not going to give it credit for that. So you can do the negative invoice, but it's just, it's not a good substitute. Um, and okay, we weren't able to do a credit memo. We can't do anything with inventory. So view balance by customer, we can certainly do that. Um, we couldn't issue a check for the credit balance. Um, view transactions summarized by customer. Let's see if we can do that. Um, I think that would probably be under reports. Actually, let's go to our Let's go to our contacts. Sometimes you can get to transactions through contacts. Yeah, here we go. So here it gives us our invoices by customer. Okay, and if we go to our, if we go to one of our vendors. Hmm. So it's still invoices rather than all transactions. Hmm. Okay, so we're not able to see all of our transactions by. Actually, what did what did the ask us for? Um, it asks us view transactions summarized by customer. So we can do that. We can see all of the sales, all of the invoice activity by customer. We just can't see it by vendor. Um, okay. Now we want to write a check to the state of New York for the sales tax liability and file a sales tax return. So let's see. First we need to see can we figure out what our sales tax liability is. And that's probably going to be under reports. Okay. Accounting and tax. I think this is probably going to be our best shot. Okay. And so that negative, again that negative invoice we entered for the credit is probably messing this up um, but we can see that uh, we've collected 3150 um, according to this report and so that's what we're going to want to pay okay so we can see that amount so that's good now how are we going to pay that 3150 well i think we're just going to have to enter a check is there a way to do that that's specific for sales taxes. Okay, so we're in transactions here. Let's add an expense paid from checking. For thirty-one fifty. Okay, and we want it to come out of there. Should be some sort of liability account here. Hmm. Well, you know what? Before we do this, then, what's our advanced view? That's just our journal entry view. Okay, so let's close this without saving it. Let's go to our reports. I want to I, let's see where that 3150 is showing up on our balance sheet. It should be showing up on the liability somewhere. It isn't. Hmm. Is it showing up on our income statement somewhere?
Okay, you can see here that we didn't have any sales that ended in 50 cents. So the 3150, yeah, that's technically incorrect. It may not be a big deal, but it's including the 3150 we collected in sales tax in our sales number, which is incorrect. Um, but some people do account for it that way, but it's really not sales. It's a liability until we pay it over to the state of New York. Um, so I don't particularly like that, but it's probably not a huge deal. Okay, but that does tell me how to how to account for the expense. So let's go to our transactions. Let's add an expense. Actually, what was this? We really want to be able to write a check eventually. If we record it as an expense, are we going to be able to write a check? So we're going to pay it out of our checking. The amount is 31.50. Now the category, the way I'm going to do it, some people might say just sales tax liability remitted or something like that. I'm going to actually just directly reduce our sales account because that's where it was recorded from. Okay. So we can hit, see what I want, but I want to write a check here and I can't write a check. Actually, so let's let's close out of here. Instead of adding it as expense, what if we go to bank transactions? No. You know what? I think the only way that we're going to be able to do this so we can write a check is to enter it as a bill. Okay, let's add a bill to New York State. Okay, and um, we want it to be sales that we're going to make it to, we're going to offset our sales. Actually, it doesn't let us offset our sales. This has, it's requiring this to be an expense account. So we're going to create a new one called sales tax remitted. It's an expense account. Okay, there we go. So we're going to send in thirty-one fifty. Okay, add a payment. Contact can't be blank. Okay, now let's add a payment. Number can't be blank. Oh, must be this reference number. I don't know what you'd put there for sales tax. Okay, now we're going to pay. 3150 from our checking. Okay. And we logged our payment. So I've done some further research and, and with ZipBooks, even when you go through a bill and you pay a bill like we did, you can't print the check from the program. So you're going to have to handwrite the check. So we were able to uh, look up the sales tax liability, record the expense. Um, now rather than running sales tax through a liability account, which is the way it should technically be done, 
they record sales tax received as revenue and so we've recorded sales tax remitted as an expense and so that's about the best we can do with sales tax so let's grade the program here view sales tax liability detail uh, we could not see detail all we could see was the total amount um, so that's not great pay sales tax liability with a check we weren't able to write a check um, we weren't able to pay it electronically through the software and we couldn't file a sales tax return so uh, there we go that's the sales tax liability so you know there's uh, it takes a little bit of time to learn what zip books can and can't do and how to do it um, but once you learn just a few basic things I do think it's a fairly easy program to use so I'm going to give it a 0.8 so it doesn't do a lot of the things that you'll need um, as your business grows but as long as it does the things you need at this point in time it's actually a fairly easy program to use so that's chapter three of the fit small business case study for zip books I'm Tim Yoder and I hope that was helpful